Hey, Scott. What are we talking about? What name did you trim off? Well, we took a little bit of a profit in Broadcom. And I know the semis have been on fire and it's so hard to sell stocks. I mean, because you have a, a two decision process. First, if you sell something, then you're going to have to buy something else and you kind of monitor the two things. And it's, it's never easy. But if you think about when we got into Broadcom, Scott, it was at the end of November. We, we sold out of our Apple position in its entirety. And we took a lot of heat for that because, you know, who likes to be out of Apple? But we felt that at the time, the multiples were a little bit stretched. So we rotated into Broadcom and the stock is up like 50% since we bought it. And knowing how conservative and, and the dividend oriented blue chip strategies that we run, you know, how often does that ever happen? So we still like the name. They have earnings coming out on Thursday. We think they're going to be really good. But we took a little bit of the profit and we rotated into Apple. Apple was the same stock that we had sold to get into Broadcom. So now we're using some profits here. Apple's down about 15% from the end of November. Broadcom's up like 50. So for us, this is an opportunity to rebuild our Apple position down here. Could it go to 160? Sure. Could it conceivably go to 150? Maybe. But it takes us a long time to get into a position. So we love days like this. Sure. But I mean, if you're not buying Apple today or, or yesterday or whenever you did it on the assumption that it's going to go down to 150. Cert certainly you're not no. ex expecting that or you wouldn't have, have done what you did. But what do you make of the weakness in that stock for something that frankly looks broken? Yeah, I mean, they're taking a couple punches from different directions right now. But under the surface, we think their margins are at all time highs. We love the service business and their free cash flow because that's what we're all about. Their free cash flow for the past 12 months is back up over $100 billion. So for us, we're not looking at Apple and saying this is time to run for the hills. I don't think it's going to go to 150, but you can never time the exact tops or the exact bottoms. The stretch for the forward multiple, 26 and change, you know, it's still a little bit high. But I think that in the 160s, we're going to have an opportunity to backfill this, this particular position. And for us, it's also a really good name to write calls on because you get volatility in the tech names that you don't in a lot of our other stocks. So we, we, we're excited about the idea of looking at Apple, especially, you know, you want to buy things uh, when they're under a little bit of pressure. Yeah. What, what about Marathon, which I see that you've added to that? That stock hasn't been under a lot of pressure, has it? No. In fact, Scott, it's at a 52 week high yeah, today. Exactly. Even in the wake of everything that's going on. Exactly. Um, I guess, I guess Marathon, it was kind of a rhetorical question. <laughs> hey, listen, if you look at if you look at these two companies, it's all about free cash flow. Uh, Apple is returning just tons and tons of cash to shareholders through buybacks and dividends. Same thing with Marathon Petroleum. They just committed another $5.9 billion to, to uh, implement more share buybacks. I was looking at Apple earlier. You know, they've cut their float almost in half since 2012. Marathon's done the same thing since 2021. So it's not like you're looking at the price of oil. The stock's not going to trade like a commodity. But free cash flow, returning cash to shareholders, increasing dividends, these are the things that we love in, in, in any investment that we make. And that's the similarity between Marathon, which is at a 52-week high, and Apple, which uh, you know everybody wants to run for the hills today. Wrote calls on Visa and McDonald's. Tell me why. You know, there hasn't been a lot of volatility, and you've covered this really well on the network with respect to the VIX over the past few years. But whenever we can get some type of vol behind any name, we, we want to take advantage of it. Both McDonald's and Visa, these calls will expire next Friday. So it's a very short term opportunity for us. But we're annualizing premiums that are in excess of 5%. So Visa, for example, has a very low dividend, amazing dividend growth, but it allows us to produce a little bit of a hedge, a little bit of an extra yield. And for uh, McDonald's specifically, if you look at just the price action and the chart, it goes up to 300, it bounces there, and it just had such trouble breaking through 300. I wish it would split like Walmart did. Um, maybe that's a consideration for McDonald's. We love the name. We've owned it for over a decade. But writing a, a short-term call here, heading into some volatility, turned out to be a good trade. If we see more vol, we'll be able to take advantage of that. And I certainly expect that we will with Apple in particular in the next couple of weeks. You feeling pretty good overall about where the stock market is? Yeah, I mean, it's stretched. You know, there, there's a tremendous amount of momentum behind it. When you look at the fear and greed index, when you look at the enthusiasm for the retail investor, when you look at the professional investor, I mean, everybody is bullish. But the momentum behind it is real. Earnings came in fairly decent. Inflation is coming down, even though all the economic data isn't perfect. You know, you referenced um, 
uh, the, t today the ISM service under 50. You never want to see that under 50 for too long. But in, in general, you've got a strong consumer. We've got a lot of labor information. I know the Fed's going to be the big talk on Wednesday and Thursday. We've got a lot of jobs information coming out Thursday and Friday. And wage growth, I think, is going to be the important number. But so far, the economy has been resilient. The consumer has been resilient. And if the, if the consumer is spending, you know, stocks will go higher. Kev, we'll talk to you soon. I appreciate it very much. Kevin Simpson, Capital Wealth Planning.